In this video, we're gonna build this chat application right here. So we can see these are messages that we sent ourselves and these are ones from other users. So if I send one right here, we can see the difference in styles and then we can respond to it with another user. So he really is, I agree as well. And this UI is a React application and the sockets on the back end is being handled with Python, specifically the Flask framework. So over here is our application, this is our React app, and this right here is our Flask app. And this is what we're gonna build in this video. Before we get started though, I just wanna do a quick overview of the project architecture. So we're gonna have two servers. You can of course download this code from link in the description using my blog site, but we'll have two servers. We'll have a Webpack dev server, which is gonna generate our React bundle and serve it up to the client. This React bundle then generates the socket connection. And then we have our Python server, which is running Flask, which will handle the WebSocket connections. So this server here generates the Webpack app and serves up. And this one here is the Flask API server that handles the socket connections. Out in production, of course, the React app would be bundled up into just an HTML and JavaScript file. And then they would be served up from either the Flask app directly or something like Nginx but this is just a general overview of the project. So to start coding, we're gonna have our React app here in a folder called client and our Python server here in a folder called server. And the first thing we're gonna do is create our environment variables. So it's gonna be all in a file called .env. I'm just gonna paste these in. What we have is we're gonna set the environment to development. We're gonna specify the location of our Webpack dev server, which bundles and creates our React app and then proxies requests to Flask. And our Flask server is located at this port host and URL. And now to start out, let's work with our Python project. So I'm gonna go into the server directory, and the first thing we're gonna do is let's create a virtual environment. And we can do that with running python3-m, which basically means to run a package. And we're gonna run the venv package, which will create a folder called .venv, which will manage our virtual environment. But first we have to activate this environment, and we can do that with source.venv bin and then activate. And now when we install packages, so we're gonna install Flask and all this, it's all gonna be specific to this virtual environment. So we're gonna install Flask, which will of course be our framework for Python, then Flask socket IO to handle the sockets, Pymon for live reloading, and then python.env to load these environment variables. So just install these. And now inside our server folder, I'm gonna create a file called source to hold our source code. And all we're gonna have in here is just a file called server.py. Once again, I'm just gonna pay, copy and paste everything and go over what's going on here. So first, here we're just importing all our libraries. Then we're gonna use .env to load our environment variables. And we're gonna, the ones we're gonna be retrieving is the location of our Flask server and also our Webpack dev server. We're gonna create our Flask app and then we're gonna wrap it with socket IO. And this basically creates a Flask socket IO server. So of course we can handle socket connections. And then we want to specify the Webpack origin as allowed. So that's why we import this environment variable because our Webpack dev server is running at a different origin. In other words, a different location. And so we want to allow connections from that server. And now it's just very simple. So we create, we use our socket IO application to handle connections. When we're connected, we're just gonna print the client's connected. And when we receive a data event, we're gonna handle it by just emitting the data, including the socket ID, the actual data, and then we're gonna broadcast it, which essentially means send it to all the connected clients. And then for disconnect, all we're gonna do is just print client disconnected. And then finally, if the file is run directly, we're just gonna run this application using the provided host and port. So we're setting the host and port ourselves. But that's all it takes for Python. So all we really, the most important thing here is just handling data, because we're gonna broadcast whatever was sent to everyone in the chat. So now we can just start working on our React app. And so the, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, first I'm gonna exit out of this virtual environment by running by running deactivate inside our server folder. So we're no longer in this virtual environment. And now let's go into our React app. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install socket IO and specifically the client. Because of course we're gonna have our client on our React app and then we're gonna have our server on our server. And now inside here, I already have all this stuff here because I've created the React app already using Webpack. You can of course either just download this code and use the React app I've created, or you can use another method, create React app, v, anything you want. But first thing I'm gonna do is let's create the glue between the DOM and the React app. And so the way we're gonna do that is this index.jsx file. We're just gonna create a root using a div with the element root or div with an ID root, and then just render our React app into it. 
We're also going to import some global styles. So these will be used throughout the entire application. And now let's create this, the HTML that will house our React app. And all it's going to be is just essentially HTML skeleton with a div with an ID of root. So then this right here will load our React app into this div. And now let's just create our global styles. And so I'm going to do this inside a folder. We're going to call it styles and we're just going to create globals.css, which will set some variables and also some universal defaults. So we have, these are styles that we're going to apply to everything. Then we have a root. We're going to create some global variables for colors. We're going to have, if your message comes from yourself, it's going to be this color. And if it's another user's message, it'll be this color. And then we're just going to make the body span the entire page. And now that we've got that style out of the way, let's just create a hook. So I'm going to create a folder called hooks. And in here, we're going to do make one called use websocket.js. And like usual, I'm just going to paste in the code in here and then just explain to you what's going on. So essentially what this hook will do is any component, any component it's used in, it will connect to a socket.io server when it mounts. So originally we have our sockets, which are set to null. And then when the component mounts, which you can see by this use effect and an empty dependency array right here, when it mounts, we're going to use the socket client IO to connect to the Flask server. The URL will come in here so we can, this generalizes the hook more so we can use it for different things. But essentially we pass in the URL, we connect to it. On connect, we're just going to log connected. Disconnect, we're going to log disconnected. But on data, we're going to handle the data. And once again, to make this more generic or general, we are going to actually have this handle data be a function that's passed in. And then we're just going to set our socket. And when the component unmounts, we're going to close down the socket. And all we return from this hook is just going to be the socket object. But so this will essentially handle the data event that's coming in from our Flask server right here where it emits this data event. This string data right here matches to our WebSocket, which we will then use to handle the data. But now let's start creating some components. So I'm going to create a folder called components. And the first one we're going to create is a chat bubble. So this is just going to be the bubble that surrounds the text that users have sent. And let me go over what's going on here. So first we're going to import some styles and we're going to receive some props. And what these will be is the message and also the socket ID, so which is basically the ID of the user. And what we will do initially is check if, it, if the message is from the current user here or if it is another user's message. So if it is their own message, then we're going to apply different styles. So these styles will be like the color of the text bubble, things like that, and also the name. So we're going to show either you, which means you sent it, or the socket ID of whoever sent it. So essentially this we use the socket ID to determine who it came from, and that will determine what styles are displayed. And then down here, we just show the message. And now let's create the styles for this. So we called it chatbubble.module.css. Let's create that file in here. So I'm just going to paste this in, and I'll paste in these styles. But essentially, we're going to set some text for all the paragraph elements, and then we're going to use display flex to align things. Or how it's going to work here is if it's the own, if it's the user's own message it will align everything on the flex end, where if it's a guest message, so a message from someone else, we will align it at the start. And then all our messages are just gonna fit all these styles. So any message, no matter who it came from, but some differences is if it's our own message, the text color is gonna be white, the background color is gonna be this variable, whereas the other one will be this variable. And then once again, we're gonna align messages that we sent to the end and messages from the guest to the start. And all of that, of course, is just imported in here and used in here. And now let's focus on our chat input component, which is just simply going to be where the user types in their message. So all I'm going to do in here is just paste this in. And once again, we have an individual CSS style for this, but it's just going to accept user input from the text input and then use the socket to send it to the server, which then broadcasts it to every other user. So originally we have some state to handle the message. And on key down right here, if, it, if the user either presses enter, we're going to send the message. And then whenever the message changes, we are going to set the message to that value. And also we're going to have a button that when clicked also sends a message. And all this will do is use the socket, which will come in through the props, to emit a data event. And then we empty out the message. And so of course this right here will contact our Flask server, which will cause the data to be admitted to, or to be emitted to everyone else in the application. But so back in here, now let's just add some styles. And so these styles are we're going to style our input element 
essentially to make it span the whole container and to also make a border using the message variable. When we're focused, we're not gonna have any outline, so when it's clicked and the element is focused, then we're gonna style our button to have a cursor, add some padding and font size, and then for our chat input class, we're gonna make it span the whole container or its whole parent, and we're gonna set the display to flex and align it centrally and with a little bit of gap. And this, where this comes from, is right here. And so this style will be used to basically separate our button and our text input. And now the next component we need to make is just gonna be a box, so it's gonna be chat box. And all it's gonna do is house the chat bubbles and align them properly. So once again, I'm just gonna paste this in here. So all we're gonna do is loop through all the messages and then use the chat bubble to, which we already created, to display the messages. But this has some styles as well, which is basically, which is once again gonna use Flexbox. And there's not gonna be too many styles in here. We're just gonna make it, the chat box span the entire parent. For overflow, we want to be able to scroll. And then we're gonna use flex and put everything in a column so everything will be on top of each other. And then just add some padding. So this will essentially make all the chat bubbles on top of each other. Now we just need to make our app component, which essentially brings everything together. So it's gonna to be app.jsx. And in here, we're gonna use our custom hook. So we import some styles and our other components that we made. Then we have our messages, which we're gonna keep in a global array. We're gonna use our use WebSocket hook. And what we're gonna to pass to it is our Flask URL. And then to handle data, all we want to do is this is a function that will set our messages, which is this array, to the previous messages with the new data appended. So if you remember, the first argument is URL, and the second is to handle data when we receive some. So we pass in our Flask URL, so we'll connect to our Flask server. And then back in our app component, we handle data by just appending this to our messages state. And then all we have here is just a title, our chat box, which is all our messages, and then our input. And then finally, let's just add some style for this one, which will be app.module.css. And all this will really do is just make it span the entire page. So 100 view height, 100 view width, and then center everything and put it in the middle. But that's all it takes to get this up and running. So we should be good to go. We'll just see if we have any, any issues. But first thing, let's, let's split this terminal. Let's have our server over here. And for this, we're gonna do pymon and run source-server.py. Once again, I think I need to activate our virtual environment. And now let's run Pymon. And so our server is listening on 1235. And now for our to start our webpack, all we need to do is just run npm start, which I haven't actually, I forgot to add. But now we're just gonna use webpack dev server to run everything. So if we run npm start, here's our application over here. So let me bring this to the side and also open up another one right here. So now we have two of these. And now we can just start working. So let's say, how are you doing? This is our sending it, and this is the person receiving it. Good, how are you? And so we can see the messages are just come back forward. If we look in our logs over here, we can see client connected along with their IDs. So this remember, this is coming from our Flash server. But yep, this is all it takes to build something like this. If you like content like this, check out my courses linked in the description. Also download my Chrome extension called Witceptor. It's pretty useful. But thanks for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.